Hello dolls, it's me, Fabs, your favorite sonographer. Today we're going to talk about how I became a sonographer and what it took for me to get into ultrasound school. If you saw my GYN Q&A, you would know that I have been a sonographer for almost seven years. It's actually going to be seven years in January. But I didn't go to ultrasound school straight from college. I had a whole different career before I went to ultrasound school. For six whole years, I was a veterinary technician. Yes, I worked with the little kittens and the little puppies and sometimes rabbits and I wanna say birds, but not really. Mostly just cats and dogs. And then one day I realized, hey, I'm getting older. I can't keep struggling with cats and dogs, fighting with cats and dogs, restraining them, risking getting hurt. So I decided that I was gonna go to ultrasound school and do ultrasound on animals. But once I got in there, I decided I wanna do OBGYN instead. So what did it take for me to get into the program? Well, I went to Sanford Brown, which no longer exists as far as I know. And to get into the program, you needed prerequisites. So I needed to already have credits in certain topics before I could get accepted, which I already had, thank God. Otherwise, they were going to have me go into the medical assistant program, which I didn't want to do. If you're in college, I suggest that you reach out to the particular school that you're interested in and ask what are their requirements. Different schools might need different things. It took me two years to complete the program and I had to do a six month externship. Now an externship is the same as an internship except it's done after you graduate. Leave a comment down below if you're thinking of going into diagnostic ultrasound. Now, did I need to take a separate OBGYN program? The answer is no. In Sanford Brown, and I think in other schools also, there are two separate programs that you can take. One program will be general ultrasound and OBGYN, that's together. Another program would be fetal echocardiogram. Wrong, it's not fetal echocardiogram, it's just echocardiogram. Sorry about that. And vascular. The first program focuses on the abdomen, the breast, the thyroid, and some vascular region, like the veins and arteries in your legs and the arms and like up here. The second program focuses only on echoes, like echocardiogram, the heart, adult heart, and maybe neonatal, maybe babies. I'm not sure. And definitely vascular, more detailed than in the general ultrasound. Once you graduate, or maybe even before you graduate, if you're allowed, there are two exams minimum that you need to take. The first one is PSI, that's a physics exam. And the second exam is your specialty. I chose OBGYN. Within the field of OBGYN, there's another exam that you could take depending on where you get hired and if it's required, which is the fetal echo. That certification allows you to do exams on the fetal heart. So you would be looking at the baby's heart while it's still inside the mom and take pictures of the heart and you would be specialized in the heart. And like I said, you don't need that one unless you get hired in a facility that requires you to do it. That's usually like a high risk clinic or a high risk hospital like maternal fetal medicine. Regardless, there are two smaller certifications that you will need if you're gonna go into OBGYN. Those are certification in measuring the cervix and certification in measuring the nucleotranslucency. Now, if you've been around, you should have seen my video on the first trimester screening and that's all about the NT or the nucleotranslucency, that measurement in the back of the neck of the baby. That certification is all about that measurement. So yes, you do need to be certified in measuring the NT if you're gonna be in OBGYN. For those two smaller certifications, all you need to do is go to the appropriate websites 
and when you get hired that job will tell you where to go some places will pay for you to take the exam and other places may not i don't really know but you could definitely do it on your own during your internship or externship probably in the website you just have to take a course answer some questions and then submit some photos so unless you get hired somewhere or you're doing an internship or externship, it might be a little bit difficult for you to do that part. But taking the exam, you should be able to do it without being hired. So in all, to work in the OBGYN field as a diagnostic sonographer, you need four to five certifications. That's a lot. Leave a comment down below if you're in diagnostic sonography school and what specialty are you interested in? Is the money I make now worth what I had to pay to get into the ultrasound program? Which was a lot of money, by the way, and only getting more expensive each year. The answer is absolutely. First, because I had already been working and saving a lot of money, I was fortunate enough to be able to afford the program without having to borrow a lot of money. Working in a New York City hospital is worth it. Of course, depending on your field. Some fields are more stressful, hectic, demanding. If you get into a highly specialized field in sonography, you're set. If you work in a small clinic, you're gonna work your ass off for very little pay but it will prepare you for a hospital job. If you're lucky enough to get hired at a hospital straight out of school, that's awesome, but don't expect to get paid much. But over time you will. Leave a comment down below if you're looking for a hospital job or a small clinic and from what city. Now I know some of you are gonna wanna know, Babs, but how much do you make? Or how much can I make? These are important questions. You need to know. I'm gonna tell you. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you how much I make, but I will tell you that when I first got hired as a temp, I was getting paid $22 an hour. Depending on where you get hired, a big city versus a town, a hospital versus a clinic, or one of those traveling diagnostic places, you can make anywhere between 50 to maybe even 90,000, yes. Obviously, the big city and in a hospital, a big hospital where they do high risk, no matter if it's a vascular or OBGYN, if you're going to be in a big time hospital in a big city, you're going to get paid a lot with experience. So the more experience, the more money that you're gonna get, obviously. So don't knock the small places because they will give you the experience. I'm going to leave a link down below with a list of oh, I'm going to leave a link down below with a I'm going to leave a link down below with a list of New York City oh, sounds school. Okay, I'm going to leave a link down below with a list of New York City diagnostic ultrasound schools that you can check out for yourself. I want to thank one of my viewers, Julie, for asking these questions. They were great questions. Thank you so much, Julie. Sonography is a great field with some drawbacks, which I will get into that in another video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I will get back to you with another video. Ciao.